okay we are discussing uh, level of service analysis for uninterrupted flow facilities and uh, there are three types freeways multi and highways which we already covered in the previous topic okay in these slides we will cover uh, rural two lane highways okay rural two lane highways now from these three we are only using the area with the type of highway with two lane highways okay we didn't say rural freeways huh? or urban freeways or rural multi lane highways or urban multi lane highways we didn't say that okay why what's the reason why we are saying rural two lane highway just two lane highway is enough why we are saying rural and why didn't we say rural freeways and rural multi lane highways yes anybody has any idea Huh? What is it? Huh? Why we are mentioning it's in rural area? Why we are mentioning only with two lane highways? It's in rural area. Why didn't we mention it with freeways or multi lane highways? Because rural highways uh, they can only take freeways. Say again. Rural highways. Can take no, no, rural highways can be two lane highways. We are saying rural two lane highways. So rural areas can have two lane highways. But what's the reason that we only mention that it's in a rural area with two lane highways? There is an urban road as well. There is? There is two lane highways. Urban road as well. Yeah. And there is urban freeway as well. Too much what? Reducing of the uh, of jams. So because that there is an area jam. Could you repeat the question, please? Ah. Huh? Repeat the question, please. You want to answer it? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, the reason is we are talking about uninterrupted flow facility. Okay. Freeway can freeway is uninterrupted. Rural or urban, it's uninterrupted. I don't need to mention. Multi-lane highway can be uninterrupted in an urban area or in a rural area, no problem. A multi-lane highway can be uninterrupted in urban areas as well as rural areas, no problem. Two-lane highways, you cannot make them uninterrupted in urban areas. Okay. Two-lane highways, they are again available in urban and rural both. But in uninterrupted condition, they are only available in rural areas. Okay, why? The reason in urban areas the population is higher, the traffic is higher, so two-lane highways or two-lane streets are only used as local streets in urban areas. And you know the local streets are not uninterrupted. Uninterrupted means what? Without what? Intersections. You cannot have a two-lane local street. In an urban area, which is uninterrupted, you cannot have it. In rural areas, it is possible. Population is very low, traffic is very low. You can manage a two-lane highway with an intersection as well. Okay, that's why. Clear? Okay. Now uh, I had the old facts which were taken from the old book, and then I found the new book. So I've taken, I changed the slides. Okay. So. Uh, this is highway capacity manual. It is uploaded on the blackboard, and this, if I'm not wrong, is from chapter 15 of the manual. Okay, but you will find, especially the questions we will do at the end, they are not from the manual; they are from another book. Okay, because the manual uh, has like an entire course only on two-lane highways. Okay, so. I try to find something which is more summarized. Okay, you will see it. Uh, but then it means that I cannot take the examples from manual. The manual example requires like uh, one example requires like three four classes, where we have to calculate so many things. Okay, so it's a mixture. But if you want to see the procedure, it is from the manual, and hopefully chapter fifteen. Okay, uh, one thing which we have been mentioning since last chapter, if you say uh, two lane highway so two lane 
means what? One in each direction. If I say four lane highway, it means what? Two in each direction. Okay, two lane means one in each direction. Why they are not considered with freeways or multi lane highways? Because of because of additional complexity. These are more complicated. Okay, why they are more complicated? Because of two reasons. The first reason, which is related to safety as well, is the passing. If you have a multi lane highway or a freeway, you have more than one lane in your own direction. You want to do passing, you go to the other lane whenever you have the chance, and then you just continue. Okay, on two lane highways, it's not possible. Okay, because to do the passing, where will you go? Opposite direction. Huh? Up, sorry? Opposite direction. Opposite direction. Sorry, you said up. You can do this as well, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah. You're inventing something now. Come. Okay, so you have to go to the opposite direction, right? Okay, and then once you have passed, you have to do what? You have to come back, okay? And then obviously opposite direction means you, traffic is coming from the other side, okay? So passing is more complicated, more dangerous as well. Okay, one reason. Second reason is even without passing. You have two lanes which are very close to each other, okay, and they are going in opposite direction, okay. So by default they have an effect on the other other side by default. Even if you are doing the passing or not doing the passing, if one side starts to go slower or it is full, it will start to affect you, okay. And it's natural, okay. You can observe if you have it's like a median or it's like a barrier. If your barrier or the median or the sidewalk, whatever object you have, if it is just beside the road, exactly beside the road, okay, you will be more careful, although it's outside the lane. Okay, but if I give you, uh, if I just move the same barrier 10 feet away from the road, the behavior will change. Okay, so anything which is beside the lane exactly has an effect on the driving behavior. Okay, sorry? Automatically, yeah. Whether you are thinking about passing or not passing, okay, you are going straight doesn't matter, but it will have an effect. So these are the two things. Passing is more complicated, okay, and uh, the one direction affects the other direction, okay. Uh, yeah, these uh, highways. Now we are calling them what? Two lane, right? Two lane. But sometimes they can have a temporary supplementary lane, an additional lane. Okay, but temporary. And these lanes can be for passing. Okay, so you are providing an extra lane to what? To pass. Okay, so you don't have to go to the other direction, you will go to that extra lane and do the pass. Okay, or you can have a truck climbing lane. So this is for, for who? Trucks. Trucks. To do what? To stop. To stop? But they are saying what? Truck climbing lane. So trucks are doing what? Yeah. Or where is it? So yeah, climbing, climbing the tree. Oh, yeah. like I mean, upgrade. upgrade. Okay. Because on upgrade, the trucks. Why we do? Why do we need a truck climbing lane? Because, because, because it reduces reduce speed. Okay. On a truck on a level terrain, and a truck on upgrade, up, upward grading. Huh? Which one is slower? The upward, okay, much slower than on level terrain, okay. So to cancel out this extra slowness of the truck, you may give them an extra lane. So until they are going on the upward gradient, they just go in this extra lane, and then once the gradient is normal, downward or level, they can come back or they can move with the traffic because their effect on traffic will be much higher on upward gradient. So we provide a truck climbing lane, or. Uh, then these extra lanes can be turnouts or pullouts. You have to, you have a facility which is just beside the road and you have to take a turn towards it, okay? Or uh, you want an emergency uh, stoppage, okay? So this is an extra lane for these type of things, okay? Like to help people who are going off the road. Anybody who wants to go off the road, they can go in this extra lane, okay? So we call them turn out or pull out lane, okay? So they are not meant for passing or they are not meant for trucks, 
Okay, you can use obviously one lane can be used for multiple things, but uh, they they give it according to a specific reason that this is for upward gradient for the trucks. This is for passing. This is for pulling out or something like this. Okay, because if you try to use it, so truck is climbing and then another person tries to use this lane for passing. It will be dangerous and obviously useless as well. You are going to the slowest lane then, which is already hold by the truck. Got it? Okay. Uh, in some cases, you may give an extra middle lane. So there is a lane which is in the middle and it is continuous. Okay. It is a continuous middle lane, but its usage is alternative. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Extra middle lane. Extra middle lane. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You want to pass, you can go to this middle lane and do the passing. Okay. You don't have to go to the other direction. There's a lane for you in the middle. You go to that lane and do the passing. But obviously, now you can imagine if you are trying to do the passing and somebody from the other side tries to do the passing as well. So these middle lanes are then uh, 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 assigned alternatively. So in this segment, it is assigned to this direction. The next segment may be assigned to the other direction. Okay, so they are assigned alternatively. Okay, so in all these cases, we call it a two plus one arrangement. Okay, so we will call it in all these cases. Will we call it a three lane highway or two lane highway? Two lane. Two lane. Why? Why not three lane? It's, it's an extra lane, right? Lane. Huh? Because it's not main lane. It's not main lane, and anything else? For both directions. For both directions. In all these cases, I'm saying in all these cases. No. Why we don't we call it a three lane? Huh? No a specific condition? Yeah, not there, it's not continuous. It's not continuous. Yes. It's not it, all these lanes, all of them, passing lane, short climbing lane, front out, pull out, or this uh, uh, middle lane, they, they are not continuous. Okay, even the middle lane, the lane itself is continuous. So it's going from the start to end. But it's not available to you from start to end. So for you it's not continuous. Got it? All these lanes are not continuous, so that's why the highway remains a two-lane highway. Okay, base conditions, the ideal conditions, the uh, includes the lane width. The ideal lane width is 12 feet. More is also considered ideal. Uh, clear paved shoulders uh, with a width of at least six feet or more. Okay, so clear means there is no object on the shoulder which. Makes sense, right? Shoulder is for the use, so it should remain clear and it should be paved as well. Okay, you can have unpaved shoulder as well. So, what's the difference between paved and unpaved? As asphalt. Asphalt. Okay, so ideal is there should be a shoulder six feet or more with asphalt. This is ideal. It can be other, other than that as well. Traffic stream, all composed of passenger cars, no other types of vehicles, no heavy vehicles. Uh, level terrain and straight alignment. Okay, terrain is level, the gradient is very, very low. We already mentioned what do we mean by level terrain in the previous uh, topic. Okay, and a straight alignment. A straight can mean actually straight, absolute, no? straight, straight and then arrow, as I call it. Or it may have a very, very large curve. Huh? You don't notice it, okay? It will not have effect on your speed. What do we call a very, very large curve? Is anything more than this? Anything more than this radius is called as very, very large curve. Clear? So, uh, this is also ideal. Yeah, no impediments to through traffic. Through means straight traffic. Impediment meaning interruption. No interruption, right? We are discussing uninterrupted flow facilities, so no interruption. Okay, uh, no traffic signals and so on. Okay, good environmental conditions. Nobody knows about them better than us, right? No rain, no fog, nothing. Just sun shining down. Okay, clear? These are the base conditions, ideal conditions. I used to have the old slides in which all the pictures were black and white. Then I found them. I just put them. I don't know why. Okay, but anyways, uh, so you can have two-lane highways which are intercity, so between two cities, 
you can have two lane highways which are intra city which means within the city okay but maybe going from one zone to another zone or from one area to another city area something like this okay you can have them passing through uh, passing uh, them through a scenic route maybe a forest or agricultural land or a mountainous area something like this okay this one shows the uh, the one with the climbing lane okay so you can see the upward gradient and there are two lanes on this side and one lane on the other side okay so the extra lane for climbing truck climbing yes all of these are the road Huh? All of these are yeah, yeah, yeah. Of you can you can see there is no there is no in all of them there is no there is no development around the road. Okay, so that's why. Uh, so it like I mentioned, it can be intra city as well. So maybe even within the city, you have areas which are unpopulated. So you can have two lane highways uninterrupted in these areas as well. Okay, we can have three types of segments. we can have passing constraint segment passing zone segment and we have uh, a, a segment which has climbing and passing lane okay so passing constraint means what not passing is not allowed okay passing zone means passing is allowed okay and climbing and passing lane means what passing is ha huh? allowed or not allowed allowed for Uh -huh. Yeah, so passing is basically allowed, okay, but from the designated lane, not from the other direction. Is what they say, okay. So in the second case, yes, passing is allowed, but from where will you pass? The other direction, okay. So that's the difference. Okay, we also need to know the number of access points we have. Uh, i mentioned in the previous uh, chapter as well access points are unsignalized points from where you can enter the highway or exit the highway in this case exit as well okay so these are unsignalized points from where you can enter the highway or exit the highway what can be these points you may have a point from our driveway an entry point from our driveway i gave you the example of the isa town campus okay so the road in, inside the campus is a driveway just taking you to the parking area and then you are coming out right it's not a main street so that's a driveway okay so it can be a driveway as well in this case it they are saying it can be from a road or a street as well you can have an access point from a road or street as well okay so that will also be considered as an access point and entering and leaving both you may have some driveways or streets which have very very low volume okay in those cases you can just ignore these points don't consider them because because the access point creates a problem when somebody is entering or exiting right so points which have very low volume then the entry and exit is very low so the disturbance is almost negligible okay you can just ignore it clear how much is considered very low less than 20 vehicles per day okay now less than 20 vehicles per day means what in a day how many hours 24, 24 right mm -hmm. huh everybody agrees huh make use of them not for sleeping other than sleeping okay so uh is less than 1 vehicle per hour right less than 1 vehicle per hour so that's so that effect can be considered negligible you don't count that you can have a two lane highway with a median a physical median okay like uh, something an object which is preventing the vehicles to go from one direction to the other direction okay i'm not talking about uh, fence. you know fence. Yes, a fence or a barrier or a curb something like this okay so uh, you may have just the lane marking okay and if passing is not allowed what lane marking they use what type of lane marking they use yes or the straight straight yes. means what yeah. continuous yes yeah where have you seen circular lane marking <laughs> straight right lane marking is straight okay continuous okay so 
continuous lane marking also means pa passing is not allowed but there is no restriction for the drivers to go there okay so we are not talking about that if you have a physical restriction an object which is uh, blocking the way from one direction to the other direction in that case access points will be counted for each direction separately so if i'm doing the analysis for this direction i'll only count the access points in this direction if i'm doing it for this direction then i'll only count the access points from this direction clear if there is a physical separation if there is an object which is blocking the crossing of the direction if there is no access if there is no blocking it's just a lane marking then you will count the number of access points for both directions each time whether you are doing it for direction a or direction b number of access points will be total clear yes. okay okay what are the measures we need to find out the level of service the first thing we need is what free flow speed the second thing is we, we need is what average speed what's the difference between them Mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> and they all have traffic conditions. Ah uh, yes. Uh, average speed and they all have traffic conditions. Under any traffic condition, okay. So average speed is under any traffic condition, which could be free flow. Which could be free flow. Okay, that could be other than free flow, right? Okay, so average speed, if the traffic is very very low, then the average speed will be equal to. Free flow, and the traffic is higher. Then average speed will be yes. less than free flow. Clear? Okay. But average speed changes according to traffic conditions. Free flow is only in free flow. Clear? Okay. And they can be equal as well. Then we have two other measures which we have not discussed earlier: person followers and follower density. Okay. Person follower. We are not talking about Instagram followers. Okay. These are cars drivers. Huh? People who have some purpose in their life. Okay, person followers means that uh, percentage of vehicles, oh, yeah, percentage of vehicles uh, which are passing a given point on the highway in a follower state. Okay, now what do we mean by a follower state? Follower state. Now let me see. <laughs> okay, next semester I will invite you. Okay, you can like. I will. I will sit in my office and give them the lectures. Okay. Uh, so follower state means that you are uh, depending upon the other driver for uh, the speed, or you are immediately affected by the other driver, the driver in front of you. Okay. So if you decide to accelerate and he is not accelerating, you cannot accelerate. If he decides to brake, there is no choice for you. You have to brake, and that has to be done immediately. We are talking about immediately, okay? Okay, so the other driver brakes. You have to brake immediately, okay? And you can only accelerate at the time when he is already also accelerating. Otherwise, not. Yes. No, no. Uh, so that's why I added immediately. So if the driver, other driver is half a kilometer in front of you, okay? So even if he brakes, then you don't have to act or react immediately. Okay, that's the so thing. There is, a certain distance. there is a certain value when they are considered in the follower state. Okay, and that is when the headway between them, the time interval between them is two point five seconds or less. Okay, this is considered too close. And if you have this much uh, closeness with the other driver, you have to act immediately according to his decisions, his or her decisions. Clear? Okay, so this is considered as follower state. Okay, the state in which the headway between you and the other driver is less than two point five seconds, or equal to two point five seconds. And why we consider follower state? Because you are following the actions of the other drivers immediately. Clear? Okay. So the percentage of drivers who are a percentage of vehicles who are in this state are called as person followers. Okay. Person followers, and then we have follower density. How do we how do we define density? What is the uh, units of units? Uh, meter. Meter. Mile. Say again. What per unit mile? 
Because per unit month, right? Because per month, okay? Fall over density, because per unit mile, because per mile, but which because which are? Followers in the follower state. Got it? Clear? Okay. So follower density is the uh, density of weakers in follower state. And what is density? Weakers per unit length. Okay. So uh, number of weakers in the follower state per unit length. Number of weakers in the follower state per unit length. Clear? Hmm. Now let's say I tell you the density is 100. 100 weakers per mile. And I have 60% in the follower state. 60%. 60. So 60 is follower in follower state. Yeah. So how much will be the follower density? 60. Total density was 100. 100 per mile. Out of these, 60 are, 60% 60 is in the follower state. So follower density is? 60. 60 per mile. Okay. You take the total density, multiply by the percent following. Clear? Okay. Clear or not? Okay, you can uh, consider them as uh, uh, capacities, okay? Capacity means what? You know what, right? Capacity means? Maximum flow rate, okay? So, this is capacity or maximum flow rate for uh, segments uh, uh, for which, have, uh, which have a passing lane, okay? Segments which have a passing lane, their capacity can be taken from here. Okay, what do I need to find out the capacity? I need percentage of heavy vehicles. Okay, and I need the vertical class of the highway. Vertical class of the highway depends upon terrain. Okay, so depending upon terrain, the two lane highways can be divided into how many classes? Five. Okay, and each one will have its own maximum flow rate. If it has a passing, if it has a passing lane, if it has a passing lane, if it doesn't have a passing lane, then the capacity is Seven. fixed. Okay, passing lane or climbing lane, whatever you consider. Okay, an extra lane. If there is no extra lane, then the capacity is fixed. This much. If there is an extra lane, then you have to take it from this table. Clear? Okay. Now we are trying to find out the level of service. So uh, on a two lane highway, you can find out level of service for the car users, or you can find out level of service for the bicycle users. Obviously we will focus on the car users, okay? But just to give you an idea, this, is, this table contains both of them. Or uh, there are two tables for each uh, user. So we have one for the car mode, okay? It depends upon what? Follower density. But the ranges are not same. These are the ranges for level of service based upon follower density for high speed roads. Okay, more than 50 miles per hour or equal to 50 miles per hour. Speed limit. Speed limit. Okay, not the free flow speed. Speed limit. And then we have less than 50 miles per hour ranges for that. Clear? Okay. So, you have ranges up to level of service E. Okay, so you can see at E, it is how much? More than 12 or more than 50. How much more? Is it mentioned? How much more? From 12 to something or 15 to something? It's nothing, right? So, from 12 to anything is E. From uh, 15 to anything is? E. Okay, and what about then level of service F? More than capacity. More than capacity. Where is the capacity? 1700. Huh? 1700. For a case, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so capacity is coming from here. If you have a climbing lane or a passing lane, take the capacity from here. If you don't have them, then this is your capacity. Okay, and uh, for level of service F, this value should be less than what? If you have level of service F, F means what? 
demand exceeds capacity. Okay, so you should already have the demand from the highway, and you take that demand and you come here and you see how much is your capacity. Okay, if your demand is higher, capacity is lower, the level of service is what? F. Okay, so uh, what do we do? First of all, we establish these things percentage of heavy vehicles, vertical class, demand flow rate. Okay, you find these things out. Then you will check with the capacity first because before doing anything else. Okay, so let's say I have 10% heavy vehicles. 10% means I'm here, right? Okay, let's say I have vertical class of 2. Okay, so my maximum flow rate is 1400. Okay, let's say my demand flow rate is uh, 1000. Okay, so is it more than capacity or less than capacity? Less. less. Okay, so I will continue. And let's say my demand flow rate is 2000, then more than capacity, right? So level of service is what? F. F. So that means what? I already found the level of service. Analysis done. Got it? Clear? Mm -hmm. So F is always easy. Some of you know that, right? Mm -hmm. Or all of you know that, huh? No? F is easy, right? Getting F is very easy. Okay. So then you move on. So first thing you check is you check if I have level of service F or not. If you don't have F, then you check what other options you have. Clear? Okay. For bicycles, so uh, first of all, you will check F, you will cross this option out, and then you will calculate follower density. Okay, so follower density is not required for checking level of service F. There is no value here. Clear? Okay. Then for a bicycle mode, for bicycle users, we use a rating from the, uh, from the bicycle users. We give them like a questionnaire, sort of a questionnaire, and we ask them to rate the highway based upon their use, based upon their experience. Okay? And based upon their rating, we do the average rating and find out the level of service. Okay? So it goes from one to something. Anyways. What data we require to do the analysis? We need the geometric data and demand data. Two types of data required. Geometric data includes the lane width, the shoulder width, uh, access points I already mentioned. Okay, posted speed limit, uh, passing zone. Okay, this passing zone is. Is it a passing zone or not a passing zone? Okay, yes or no. Uh, vertical grade. Then you need the value of the grade. Horizontal curve. If you have a curve, then the radius. Required. Uh, if you have a passing lane, then what is the length of the passing lane? Okay. The demand data, what do we need? We need uh, the demand volume in your direction, direction in which you are doing the analysis. We need the volume in the other direction as well. Okay. So we need volume for both directions. Even if you are doing the analysis for one direction, you still need volume of the other direction. Okay. So it's not like freeway in multi and hybrid. In those examples, we took one direction volume and we just did it. Here you need both, both of them. Okay. What else do we need? We need the analysis period length in minutes, like the length of the length for which we are taking the flow rate. Okay, the length of time for which we take the flow rate. Okay, and that is usually 15 minutes. Okay. We did in the delay calculation as well. Then you need the peak hour factor. If you don't have it, there is a recommended value. And we need the percentage of heavy vehicles. Again, if you don't have it, there is a recommended value. Okay. Now you can see here, if you go from the top, some of the values, we have a standard value for them. Okay. Lane width is standard, is this much. Shoulder width is this much. Number of access points standard is this much. For the rest, you have to uh, provide them. Okay. You can see, if I already have a highway, I'm doing the analysis for an existing highway, okay, then I can go and measure the lane width and shoulder width, right? If I'm designing a highway, 
then I will get it from the drawings. Okay, if it's for a future highway, I should have an initial design, and from that design I will get the values. Okay, so you can see some of them. Uh, mention the design plans. So this is for future highways. Okay. Then uh, the volumes. Okay. Again, if the highway is existing, you can go to the highway and count the volume each direction. Okay. If the highway is not existing, you will use the forecasted volume, the predicted value for the future. Okay, the planned value for the future. And what do we call this value? There was a question in the last chapter as well. With that value. What do we call it? It was in the first chapter as well. The value which we use for design. Yeah, DDSV. Okay. So uh, then you will use the DDSV values. Okay. What else? Yeah. Peak hour factor, percentage of heavy vehicles. They are saying only comes from the field data. Okay. Why not demand if, the, if I'm designing the highway? How will I have peak hour factor and percentage of heavy vehicles from the field data? There's no field. There's no field data. There's no highway. So what do I do? Similar highways, okay, similar highways. In the same area, you will look for similar highways and you will take their peak hour factor and their percentage of highway vehicles. Clear? Okay, so it's not to be, it's not something which you can assume. Okay, this is the procedure. Okay, you can zoom in later on, but I can go through it. Uh, first of all, identify the boundary of your segment. What is the starting point? What is the end point, okay? Then find out the demand flow rate and capacities. Demand, what do what are you expecting on the highway, or uh, what you are expecting, or what is uh, what you already have? Okay, so find out the demand and for capacity, I already showed you the values in the table. Okay, and uh, from these two values, I will know what demand and capacity then i can know what f or no okay so i can make the decision about level of service f if it is not level of service f then we can proceed with the analysis okay what is the next step if it is not level of service f the next step is find out the uh, vertical alignment of the highway. So find out the gradient, the terrain and so on. Okay. Then find out the free flow speed. You can measure the free flow speed. And what do we call that a study? Sports speed. Sport speed study. Okay. So you can measure it or there's an equation to calculate it as well. I will show in the previous chapter. Once you know the free flow speed, then again look at the demand flow rate. Okay. Uh, if the demand flow rate is very low, then the speed equals what? Huh? Yeah, free flow speed. speed. So what do we consider as very low? Again, if you go to the freeway and uh, basic, uh, sorry, freeway multi and highway topic, there was a value. Huh? What is that? There's a val there was a value. If you are behind this value, the speed equals to free flow speed. If you are in front of that value, the speed is something. Okay, and we call it the break point. We call it the break point. Okay, the break point for two lane highway is 100. Okay, 100. So if it is less than 100, whatever free flow speed you have is your average speed. If it is more than 100, then you have to find out the average speed and there's an equation for that. Okay. So if it is more than 100, then find out the free flow speed using the equations. Find out the percent followers, okay? And uh, at this stage, you should know if you have a passing lane or not. If you have a passing lane, then there are some adjustments to be made for the percent followers, okay? And then after you find out the percent followers, you make the adjustment, then you have to find out the follower density, okay? After you find out the follower density, you have to find out uh, adjustment for what? Follower 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for what? Ah. Adjustment if your uh, segment is downstream of a passing lane. Downstream means what? Downstream means after. After. And upstream means what? Before. Okay. So maybe the segment before your segment had a passing lane. If this is the case, there is another adjustment for it. Okay. So there is an adjustment if your segment has a passing lane. Okay. And then there is another adjustment if the previous segment had a passing lane. Okay. So two types of adjustments are there. After making the adjustment to the follower density, then you will find out level of service from the table. Okay. And uh, then you can continue for the rest of the segment. Okay. We will not do the, the last step. Okay. We will not even look at it. But just for the sake of explanation, you have a very long highway. Let's say 10 kilometers. In this 10 kilometer, the segment properties will change, right? The gradient will change. The number of lanes can change. You may have a passing lane, may not have a passing lane, climbing lane, up, upgrade, climbing lane, and so on and so forth, okay? So I cannot treat the whole highway as one segment. I cannot do one analysis for the entire highway. So what I will do, I will break the highway into smaller parts, right? And each part will have its own analysis and level of service. So the last step says you can combine all the level of service from all parts and try to come up with one level of service for the whole height. Okay. So it's a method of averaging the level of service, finding out the average level of service. But it's not easy, obviously, because level of service is what? Huh? It's a letter, right? You cannot just say a simple average, A plus B plus A. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, we will not do it, okay? We will miss some of the other steps as well, but recommended lengths for each type of segment and each type of vertical class. These are recommended lengths, okay? So you can use the table to find out how much should be the length for any, so for example, I have a passing zone and I have vertical class three. If I go here, the length should be in this range. Don't use it reverse. Don't say that I will use it to find out the vertical class. You cannot do this. So for example, if I have a passing zone and a length of two miles, what vertical class I can have? And huh? I can have this one. I can have this one, I can have this one, I can have this one. Okay, so you cannot use it the other way around. Try, don't try to find out the vertical class from here. You cannot. Okay, you know the vertical class, you know the type of segment, use the table to find out the length. Okay, the recommended length. Uh, every, the volume which you have must be converted to what now? What we are doing, divide by peak hour factor. Volume divided by peak hour factor, it becomes what? Flow rate. Okay, volume divided by peak hour factor becomes flow rate. And you have to do it for both directions, as I already mentioned. Okay. Once you did this, then you go to the table which I showed you for capacities, maximum flow rates, and find out the demand upon capacity ratio. Demand upon capacity. If demand upon capacity is more than one, then level of service is? Okay, so this is what we can do up to this stage. For finding out vertical class of the highway, you use this table. So you need the length of the highway, length of the segment, and you need the gradient of the segment. Okay, based upon that, you can find out what vertical class you have. This is for the passing zone, this is without the passing, the passing constraint. Okay. Yeah, I believe this is the last one. Okay, free flow speed, you can measure the free flow speed as I already mentioned, spot speed study. If you cannot measure it, then you can calculate it using these equations. Okay, first of all, base free flow speed. This into speed limit, SPLS speed limit. Okay, this will give you base value. Then this is the equation for calculating free flow speed. We want what? Free flow speed, okay, not the base value. What I have to put here, base, Percentage heavy vehicles, factor for lane and shoulder width, this value, okay? 
what is lw nail width sw shoulder width okay you need this fact factor for excess points i'll get it from here okay so what are the, what is this excess point density count number of excess point divided by the length okay then divide by 4 excess point density number of excess point divided by length then divide by 4 then out of these two you will take the minimum okay so if this is less than 10 you will take this value if it is more than 10 you will take this one okay then we have a here a comes from this equation okay so we need a not a1 a2 l means length bff as you already know from where will we get a a not a1 a2 a3 4 from this table so you should know the vertical class you can find out the value of the a's you can see here some of the brackets have maximum okay so you have to look at the comma so you see zero comma this whole thing so either zero or this whole thing whatever is maximum so what they are saying if this thing is negative take zero and zero multiply with this zero okay and same thing outside the bracket as well this thing okay or this one okay this thing or this whole thing sorry either this 0 0.0333 or this whole thing whatever is red okay and is will come from this thing okay i already mentioned this if free flow speed is less than 100 oh sorry demand is less than 100 speed equals to free flow speed more than 100 it will come from this equation in this equation you can see the factors m and p M and P have their own, own long calculations. We are not doing this. I did not make it a part of the slides, but they are in the manual. You can see it has like many tables and many equations. Okay. For the time being, we'll consider that will be given somehow. Okay. Just to give you an idea for M and P, I need all these things. I need to use all these things. Okay. All these uh, five, six things must be used for just finding out M and P. Once you know the speed, we can find out percent followers using this speed or uh, using this equation. So I need M, P, and VD. VD means flow rate in my direction. VD means flow rate in my direction. If you see V0 somewhere, it was here somewhere. V0 means flow rate in the opposite direction. V0 flow rate in the opposite direction. VD my direction, V0 opposite direction. Okay. Once you find out person followers, you will find out follower density. Okay. Person followers divide by 100 because it's percentage. Okay. Divide by 100. Multiply by V, D upon S. V is flow rate. S is speed. Flow rate upon speed, density. So this will give you total density. Multiply by person followers, it will give you follower density. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So, in these slides, I am not covering the adjustments. The two adjustments which I mentioned in the flow chart, we are not covering it. And we are not covering the calculation of M and P because they are very long. Okay. But you can go to the book and have a look at it. Last point uh, is in the freeways and multi highways, I showed you a different equation for design designing number of lanes there is no such thing here there is no such thing here as a design equation because number of lanes are what two you can use it for design the analysis can be used for design as a trial and error okay so you fix the lane width look at the level of service level of service is good you can keep the lane width not good change the lane width see how much level of service you are getting Okay, so there is no direct equation for design. You can use the same procedure with your design values to see how much level of service you are getting. Clear? Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you.